Hello, Christian Livingstone here, and I'm uh, installing a uh, suspension system on my Dixon mower. I recently put uh, some new cones on the mower, and I was kind of happy with it. It turned out well. I did a video on that and uh, shared it on my YouTube channel. So, you know, I thought I'd treat myself and the mower to uh, a suspension system because, you know, these are pretty old tech, uh, uh, and, you know, they're not as uh, uh, refined as the... Uh, hydro units so I thought I'd just try to soften the ride up and uh, this particular suspension system that just goes under an existing seat uh, is uh, well rated. The Amazon uh, users uh, and buyers uh, uh, really seem to dig this thing so you know it's going to take some hacking though to make it work on this particular unit but anyway I received it uh, by uh, UPS. Uh, it was an out-of-state sale uh, and uh, no taxes that way and uh, you know I was just starting to look at it and think about how I'm gonna go about uh, installing it and modifying it and uh, I got a text message from uh, an old neighbor friend uh, around the corner down the block I, I moved recently and uh, he has a Dixon mower uh, almost the same identical model as mine his is a uh, 1999 I think it's like a 3314. It has the bigger deck uh, uh, as original equipment. I expanded mine to a bigger deck, uh, but it really came with a, a 30 uh, inch uh, single blade deck. But uh, they're, they're pretty much the, the same unit. They've got the same transaxle cone system. And I get a text message from him yesterday. I'm sitting around kind of scratching my head about what to do about this thing. And uh, he says, I'm changing my cones. I said, hey, great, I just changed mine, and blah, 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 I did a video, and, you know, you should see it, blah, 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 and, because uh, he'd never changed his cones before, but, uh, you know, he's a pretty good machinist, uh, hobby machinist uh, himself, and uh, he said, but, you know, what happened, he said, uh, uh, the, uh, one of the cradles with the disc cup uh, installed into it, he said, I was, uh, uh, carrying it and I dropped it and broke off two parts of it. He says, do you got a spare cradle around it? And I said, oh, I don't got no spare cradles around, but uh, I said, uh, snap a picture of it uh, and let me see it on the uh, uh, text uh, uh, message on my phone. And he does, he, I, I get the, and, you know, it's got the actual cradle arm is broken off right at the yoke where the little roller uh, uh, thing goes for the uh, uh, adjustment and also the uh, uh, the fork, one of the fork uh, fingers on the uh, uh, torque rod bushings back there, you know, the major adjustment area and uh, so, you know, it was it was pretty, pretty serious business and uh, he uh, told me that, uh, you know, he couldn't find any parts online, they were NLA no longer available and, you know, I've been talking about this for a while about you know, how long Dixons will be, uh, you know, viable or, you know, will they become obsolete just due to parts problems. And uh, he said there's one on, uh, a couple on eBay, but uh, they have a different part number listing and, uh, but they look the same. So he didn't want to do that because, you know, it may not be correct. And uh, I said, well, yeah, uh, I'll tell you what, uh, let me, let me, uh, pop over and uh, give, it, uh, 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 give it a try in TIG welding it. And uh, I'm not a TIG welding expert, and especially not with cast uh, metal. And, uh, but I said, you know, there's a good chance uh, it'll weld up. And uh, I've got some stainless filler, and I believe that's the, the best course for that uh, uh, piece there. And uh, so sure enough, uh, I uh, dropped by picked it up and uh, you know yesterday is when I did it. Okay, and here it is the uh, cradle uh, for one of the sides uh, to the disc cup and uh, as you can see uh, it was broken off here and I've already welded that uh, fork uh, arm right there and it uh, went well. I uh, included some build up and he can grind that down if he wants to but uh, you know more is better I think. Uh, and this is the other brake. This is the tricky one here. This is the cradle arm and this uh, roll pin here, I've shortened that roll pin 
just to keep it in place for the alignment. I, I believe this alignment is more critical than even this arm itself because you got that little roller that uh, goes in there and uh, uh, that's the, uh, the critical tolerance for the uh, adjustment at 50 thousandths. But uh, I've left that uh, uh, roll pin uh, to be very short in there. And, when I'm done welding, I'm just going to cut it and pluck those out. I'm just going to, uh, you know, chop out a little quarter inch portion and pull those, uh, uh, that dowel pin uh, out of there. But, you know, first I'm going to weld it. So that'll, that'll hold everything in place. This went uh, extremely well. I just, uh, it just really surprised me. Because like I say, I'm not an expert uh, uh, TIG welder, and especially when it comes to uh, cast stuff. I've only done a few things in cast, and you know, it's it's always kind of, uh, you know, surprising with cast. Sometimes it goes well, sometimes it doesn't. This stuff seems to uh, weld fine with DC uh, uh, and the uh, stainless uh, filler rod. So, uh, you know, you don't have to have a fancy machine. I, I've got an Everlast 210 EXT. It's got waveforms and all the, the groovy stuff. But, uh, you know, a lot of guys uh, in a typical neighborhood will have DC TIG units. You can get them uh, for about 400 bucks. a, a, a DC uh, TIG welder uh, without uh, any fancy bells or whistles. And, uh, you know, be welding these things up. And, uh, you know... I'm not going to know uh, how how long it holds up, uh, but uh, uh, I'm I'm believing that it's going to hold up well. I've done a lot of beveling there, and uh, so there'll be a, a good amount of penetration and fill up with the uh, stainless filler. And that stainless there, uh, I believe the the uh, weld at this point will be stronger than the cast itself. But it's in that critical yoke area for that uh, little roller. Uh, uh, thing there, so you know I can uh, add a, a little bit of build up around that, and uh, uh, just to be doubly sure. And it went, it went well, it went really well. And uh, that's just another piece, I think, uh, to this puzzle about you know the Dixon mowers. Are they still viable? You know, should people bother with uh, you know uh, keeping them? Because you know my neighbor said you know. It, it might be that I'll just get a, a hydro unit, you know, spend $3,000 on a hydro unit. I say, hey, that'd be cool, but, uh, you know, let me give it a shot. And uh, you got nothing to lose because uh, the part's no good, you know, without somebody taking a shot or getting another one. And he couldn't find another one. So uh, I'm happy to say that uh, those uh, uh, cast parts in the uh, these Dixon uh, uh friction drive transaxles weld up uh, very well, very easily, uh, you know, even for a, a, a non-expert like me with uh, TIG welding. And so I'm going to tack the uh, uh, four corners and uh, let it cool for a bit, but uh, I got the camera right there just so you can see what's going on. You know, you won't get a real puddle shot, but uh, I just want want you to see and then I'll, I'll uh, show you uh, close up uh, with the camera. And you can just get the gist of it, but uh, it puddles up real well. I just, uh, I'm happily uh, surprised at how well it, it does puddle up. Okay, there's two beads in the corners. I'll flip it over, but uh, before I do that, I'll just show you. Yeah, just no problem. It's just such a, a pleasant surprise. But, you know, undoubtedly the cooling is uh, key. You know, you start hearing that tink, tink, tink uh, uh, sound, then you know you're, you're getting cracking and expansion and weird stuff and uh, it, I haven't had that problem yet though so I'm just taking it real slow and easy I'll tack the other two uh, corners after I flip it and then uh, rest it for a minute yeah, probably 15 minutes this is a conversation about Dixon's and you know getting down the road a little farther uh, with them and uh, you know the parts problem now my uh, 
neighbor friend, uh, you know, he said, uh, you know, I just might uh, uh, find a, a, a used one laying in somebody's yard and, and offer to buy it from them just as a parts unit because they're, they're quite common to see around and out back somebody's yard and, you know, they lost the adjustment and they just gave up on them. So, you know, you can always uh, find parts, I believe, just that way. And uh, as there's, uh, you know, fewer users of Dixon mowers, uh, you know, further we go down the road, you know, some of those users are dropping off. They're just going to hydro units. So, you know, I think the parts availability will still be good for that reason, too, because there's, you know, less demand for those parts uh, as the Dixon users become fewer. Yeah, more of the same on the other side. Uh, and uh, I'll probably uh, weld these two uh, thinner uh, sides rather than this wider side here because the uh, distortion tends to pull uh, this this way and that and this is what I want to keep uh, uh, straight. I, I, I might clamp on a, uh, a bar across here on both sides just to hold that. I don't think I really have to if I uh, weld this side and the other side then go in for that longer portion of the bead just to prevent any uh, uh, distortion that way. But yeah, it's going well. So, you know, the, the, the demand uh, won't be so great. So the supply, I think, will still be good in a lot of the off-the-shelf uh, sources, online sources. Okay, I've got the three sides welded, and uh, I've just gone in and uh, cut out uh, most of that uh, roll pin, and then I can just hopefully pluck it out, each piece out, and I uh, might need two hands. Uh, there it goes one with one hand. You see those were just kind of loose fit in there. I didn't want to fully drip it in uh, roll pin, drip pin. I just needed that alignment though. And gimme. Okay, and here we go, the last uh, weld inside that little yoke there. I've got the uh, stick out uh, pretty far at, uh, I don't know, five-eighths, maybe three-quarters of an inch. Uh, the cup is pretty wide, and I've got 20 uh, cubic feet uh, of uh, argon flowing, so, you know, I'm not too worried about uh, the shielding gas. I'm going in there for this uh, last one, and th this is all single pass. I'm not going to wash the weld, clean them up, try to make it look uh, prettier than uh, what I can get just uh, with the instant uh, 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 run of it. Uh, because, uh, you know, you, you try to pretty this stuff up and then you put too much heat input and you, you start getting that uh, tink, tink, tink sound and that's no good. So uh, hopefully I won't get any of that now that I mention that. But uh, yeah, one last uh, weld. Losing my light. But yeah, I'm uh, I'm hitting it pretty hard here. I'm only uh, on uh, 120 volt uh, circuit here, and I don't have 220 in this garage. I I haven't uh, lived here that long. I'm not gonna get 220 put in here to try to get a friend to help out but uh, I tell you this uh, uh, dual voltage uh, unit I got my my previous place uh, you know had 220 and I used 220 exclusively with the welder but when I moved here uh, a couple of few months ago you know I was a little uh, worried or wondering uh, you know how well 110 would do would it uh, do well enough for me uh, in, in most cases and, and I think it is I think uh, you know, I'm happy as a proverbial clam. I've got the uh, thing set to 110 amps. I don't know when it'll break uh, the, the circuit breaker, uh, you know, if I set it to 140 and nailed it. I, that would probably trip the breaker. And, you know, this is a, an unattached garage, so I'd have to run back and fiddle and fumble with all that. But uh, at 110 uh, uh, amps, uh, 
you know, I'm I'm doing this stuff, and I could probably do more too. But uh, I'd probably get up to 120 amps, maybe 130 before I trip the breaker. But anyway, uh, let me show you the finished product, and uh, that's it. We are done. I'm, I'm doing no more, and that's that that weld uh, right in the yoke of it. So you know, that's the whole the whole business of it. And uh, as these parts, uh, you know, become uh, almost impossible to find, you know, from a, a dealer source or off-the-shelf source, uh, you know, it may be that uh, people will, uh, you know, take notice of this little video and say, hey, yeah, you know, there's a guy out there that said, uh, you know, these cast parts uh, can be welded easily enough. And I'm telling you, it appears to be the case. I... Uh, you know, I can't give you the uh, long range, you know, whether these welds are going to hold up, but I'm guessing they, they are. I'm guessing the weld with the uh, stainless filler is going to be stronger than the cast metal because, you know, you you heard the uh, uh, story, uh, you know, my uh, ex-neighbor friend uh, uh, down, the, down the block around the corner, he just dropped this and broke off two parts of it. So, you know, I'm guessing that this is going to hold up well. And uh, his uh, model of friction drive, uh, Dixon, is uh, a little newer than mine, and I believe uh, uh, on one side, uh, the upper, and then the other side, the lower, his uh, torque rod uh, bushings are cut in uh, metal cups. So, you know, he may want to uh, grind this down if that's the case. On mine, they're just rubber bushings above and below, so I wouldn't uh, bother to... Uh, you know, remove any of that uh, metal deposition. I, I would leave it wherever the uh, rubber bushings are, you know, without the metal cups. But for the metal cups, yeah, you'd want that to be a smooth surface so that, you know, they don't rock and roll over that too much. But, uh, yeah, stainless uh, rod on these uh, Dixon uh, castings uh, uh, are uh, weldable, and they're weldable without much trouble. I, I'm, I'm telling you, as a... a novice TIG welder, this was a pleasure to, to weld. It really was. Okay, I'm going to get back to uh, my other project, and that is that uh, suspension uh, seat uh, component, aftermarket component. Uh, that one's going to make me work for it, though. It's, uh, it's the, the seat I have is uh, apparently not designed for that, but, uh, you know, we'll make it work. Uh, so, uh, yeah, the cradles, the other cast parts on the Dixons, uh, it's a, just another happy point on Dixons uh, that, uh, you know, may help people to decide to keep the Dixon a little longer and not, you know, splash out for uh, a hydro unit, as nice as that would be. But, uh, you know, and I'm not saying be cheap. You know, if you want the hydro, get the hydro and have the ball. But, uh, uh, you know, if you're still enjoying your Dixon and you have a little mishap somehow, uh, you know, weld it up. Find somebody who uh, has a cheapo uh, DC TIG welder and uh, find some, uh, you know, stainless filler and uh, weld it. It's easy. But the other avenue is the repairability of those uh, transaxle cast uh, uh, parts. It's, uh, they're surprisingly easy to weld. So that's all. I'm just going to share that little tidbit. Uh,